Hello there, um, I want to show you uh, the most useful photographic tool that I have. Um, I've invented a lot of stuff over the decades. Yes, I said decades. I'm obviously dating myself. Now, I did show you this device um, a few months ago. It's a macro tool attaching for the front of your uh, speed light. You either keep the speed light on your camera and use it to illuminate the macro objects. Incredibly handy. My own little creation using fiber optic cable. Now, and you see I got the Fuji in front of me, that doesn't mean anything Let's work with Nikon or Canon or anything else, so don't whip out that, oh god, you got the Fuji out again. Doesn't mean anything. Now, I'll show you what I got here. If you want to see a close-up, I'll not make another video on it. I have a Nikon Speedlight, it could be like an SP, it could be SP26, as long as it's got a manual setting. So I'm using a wireless trigger on this, um, Pocket Wizard Plus 3. You use a cheaper pocket wizard, you can use that unreliable, uh, junky, doesn't live very long Chinese crap that uh, is obviously, obviously a lot cheaper than the pocket wizards. Um, now I have a manual setting right now, and adjust my output to 1 8, which is where I typically use it at. Now I have some Velcro straps here, one for attaching the belt loop, but I'm going to show you a dozen different things really quickly, or at least point out a half a dozen and mention the others of why this is the most uh, useful uh, photography tool that I have. Right now this is just a piece of styrofoam that I have 11 strands of uh, fiber optic cable running through, a very thick fiber optic cable. Now 100 foot of this stuff is 20 bucks and this piece of styrofoam is obviously free. This is industrial velcro just holding the styrofoam on with the light blocker so no light is actually leaking out. That's important. Speed light, uh, speed light use is obviously light control. Now this is about seven foot long. You make it about six foot long. Doesn't make any difference. And uh, I can actually adjust this once I actually hook it onto my belt loop. If I can actually, I should have had my uh, shirt tucked in. I wasn't thinking about that at the time. Um, but I'm going to show you a few things that I can actually do with this. Okay. Got my feet. Actually, I hang this over my head, like so. Do a little test. I said use my Fuji, doesn't matter, use your Nikon. What is so useful with a 7 foot of 11 strand, like I said, it could be 10 or it could be a 15 strand fiber optic cable? Why is this so incredibly useful? Now, I love using this on location for macro work. Um, for uh, edge illumination and portraiture, since I'm working off a wireless trigger here, I could use it for countless things. Okay, um, let's say there's very little light in this room. Right now I've actually got a lot of light, okay? I'm point it wherever I want. Okay, manual mode, 1 25th of a second. Uh, F6, whatever it is you want, compositionally. Absolutely a gorgeous shot. Okay. I said one thing that defines professional photography, obviously, is composition. Second is light manipulation, control of the light. The sub-attribute of the secondary attribute, the secondary aspect of professional photography, composition and light manipulation is control. When you have absolute control over your light, you will take shots that will blow people's minds, what makes you money. It's what uh, pads your portfolio, it what, it's what people like, okay? Light does not want to play with you most of the time and actually give you the picture that you want, no matter how good of a photographer you are. Now, I'm going to start doing a lot of videos on strobus photography and giving you a lot of tips and tricks on uh, how to do uh, strobus work. Uh, that's actually a term that pisses some people off. They hate the term strobus, but I don't give a damn what you call it. What do I use this for? Now, I don't have to actually necessarily have it hooked to my speed light. Um, I can take it off my speed light immediately, and I'll actually use it uh, for painting late at night. I'll actually hook um, a flashlight like this to one end. I'll use the other end to paint on a camera on a tripod. That's a secondary attribute to what I can use it for. Let me show you something else. That, that sphere actually looked... Uh, looked uh, really good. Now, um, I can actually place this on location since I'm on a wireless trigger here. 
I can hang this from a nail on a tree and actually point the fiber optic at a model that's leaning against a tree and use it for perfect spot illumination. Say, so it's dusk. I, uh, one of the main things, really the primary thing in strobus photography is that you're uh, using your shutter on your camera to expose for the background, your background illumination, then you add the layer of light, i.e. your speed light or your strobe. Nobody's carrying around a big strip, but some people are carrying around a big studio strobe for location shots, but those are really professional uh, shots and you usually got to have an assistant, otherwise you're grunting a lot of gear. Speed light use, you layer that second layer of light in addition to what you've already set uh, your shutter and your aperture for for background illumination okay so you got two different shutters you got one shutter for your background that's set on your camera and you actually have your second shutter which of course is the speed of light and all you're concerned then about is actual intensity of illumination and the angle of interception where it's actually placed and obviously certainly so how intense it is but imagine our gorgeous model, yeah, I know that's a stretch. Imagine our gorgeous model, okay? I just want you to think wildly. Obviously, one of the important things of professional photography is thinking outside of the damn box, being inspired in your brain. Like, people come up with these freaky music videos. It's like, that's so freaking cool. I never would have thought of that. Well, you're going to have to start thinking out of the box and coming up with crap. But then you're going to have to have the mental skills and acuity as a photographer to be able to say, well, I've got the picture in my head, but how do I actually create it? So imagine for a second I was a gorgeous model, which I know that's a really stretch. So I'm the furthest thing from that. I got the face from behind the camera, obviously not in front of the camera. Remember, this is digital photography. You remember what you can do in digital photography? You can erase stuff out and post. I don't have to green cloth this fiber off the cable and just go... Photoshop. It take me about five minutes to do that. Okay, so I got the crystal ball in my hand here. Oh, look, the fiber optics is feeding the back of it. Now imagine there's no light in here. Okay, right now there's a lot of light flooding this place. So imagine it really dark. Hmm, what am I doing? I'm you're, I'm back over there. Okay, shooting. Now I'm the model, of course. Obviously, the model wouldn't have the camera in her hand like this. I'm shooting where the camera is currently. That's filming this. And I'm filming that. Oh, interesting. You imagine what you could do now? Let's see something else. What else could I do? Remember what I showed you how useful it was to use a monopod? Why a monopod is basically one of the most useful tools in the world. Actually, I had my uh, flash on pause for too long. I don't think it fired on the last shot. I was flapping my lips for too long. Now I have a piece of Velcro attached to the end of this. And right here I have a cold shoe to tripod. And then I have this little uh, cold shoe adapter right here, which is an additional dollar. So this is three dollars on top of the monopod. Look. Look at that. This is so useful for macro photography. Like if you're out taking a bunch of flower or insect shots, now look what I've got. I've got, let me move this chair out of the way, I've got seven foot of fiber optic cable, let's say this crystal ball is uh, a flower, okay, actually, you make sure that you've got your monopod in the right place first, obviously working indoors like this, not so great, so you see what I'm doing here? Got the fiber optics just that this is obviously not a macro lens, okay, so right now I've got the fiber optics in the frame, in the macro lens, I wouldn't. I'm illuminating a flower or an insect. Well, I can't get that close. Okay, so I'm back this far, and I want specific light control of that insect, of that flower. I want to shoot behind the flower. Gee, how would I do that? Look how difficult this is. Does this seem really hard to you? I'm actually illuminating the flower from behind. Okay, now I want to come up underneath the flower. Let's say the crystal ball is the flower. Gee, how did that turn out? Gorgeous! Gorgeous. You see this? High light control on the end of a monopod. The most two, well actually the three most useful things that I've found in 20 years uh, for creating uh, photographic tools that are so handy to me. Thick fiber optic cable, industrial Velcro, which you can get at any hardware store, and um, 
Yeah, industrial uh, duct tape. Industrial duct tape, industrial Velcro, and fiber optic uh, cable. Like I said, 100 foot of this is $20. So the most useful photographic tool that I have right here is $21 to make. At the other end of this, you can see it hanging off my belt loop. And I can adjust this. Let me get rid of this monopod. Let me stick this around my neck, which is where I carry it. Now this looks really ungainly, but it's not. Like if you're out in the field, and you're traipsing somewhere, and you whip this rig out, and you do some macro photography, it's actually, it's not actually ungainly at all. I can raise this up right here, adjust my uh, flash output manual level, right now 1 8, I'm right 1 16, back to 1 8 again. Very, very handy. I can hang this wireless trigger off a tree, illuminate a model, macro work, um, product illumination, um, endless. Twenty dollars. It's my own little invention. Um, I came up with this God knows how many years ago. I've made a few of these and uh, I've gone through, I should have ordered a thousand foot of fiber optic cable when I started doing this um, some time ago. I think I've only got like about 300 feet left. I finally did order a thousand foot of it, which is really cheap. It's a lot more expensive for you just to order a hundred foot of it than it is just to order a thousand. You guys don't need a thousand foot of it though. I actually thought about going into production on this. Uh, obviously not hand making them, but actually having someone make them. I gotta melt the ends and flatten them out for maximum light transference. But this is the most useful tool that I have. It's perfect for macro, portrait, bug shots, Night illumination, special effects, absolute light control. Um, now, the question is, is if I have this on uh, half power, you don't want it on full power. Have it on half power, at a distance of about 8 feet, I have a circle of illumination that's also about 6 to 8 feet. So, that back wall is about 12 feet if I actually point at the, the wall. Um, and to bring it in half power on the speed light, I'd get about a seven foot circle of illumination. Um, incredibly, incredibly handy. Now this looks ungainly, but it's not. It doesn't weigh anything. Um, so I wanted to show you that and uh, do a start off into the strobus photography. We'll have a little talk, but I wanted to show you my little invention. The thing that I love the most because it is so useful and it, uh, I made it myself because I'm a smart little bastard. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Okay? Catch you later. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two. Go tell me to jump off a cliff. And if you want to see a close-up of this little invention, it's very, very simple. But let me know and I'll do it. Okay? Bye.